Welcome to this week's edition of Coach Prep. Coach Don and I are here in the Cherokee Batting Range Podcast Studio getting ready to record episode number 112. We're going to talk about playing in cold weather, but before we do that, let's talk about our sponsors. First, the Anderson Bat Company. Everything Fast Pitch is very proud to have Anderson Bat Company as our presenting sponsor. Anderson Bat Company is using the latest and greatest bat technology to corner the market in the fast pitch world. They have the minus 9 rocket tech, the minus 10 carbon, and the minus 11 carbon light. Anderson Bat Company is using this technology to put a high-performing bat in the hands of hitters that really know the difference between a good bat and a great bat. We're also working with Anderson to provide a discount for all of our listeners. Go to the Anderson Bat Company website and order your bats. Use the EFP20 discount, which is for everything fast pitch, and you'll get a 20% discount. It's a great way for you to save a little bit of money on a great bat and also help support everything fast pitch at the same time. Please make sure you take advantage of that EFP20 discount. It's a great way for you to save some extra money and to help us at the same time. We certainly would appreciate it. Make sure you go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. Once you get there, it's going to explain to you how to become a patron. We're very fortunate. We've got a strong group of patrons that have been supporting us for a while, but we would love to add you to the community. Three different levels of support. And it's really helping us to continue to keep everything fast pitch going and coach prep, obviously. Um, without the patron support, we would have had to shutter this operation a long time ago. So we really do appreciate them. And if you see value in what we're doing, we'd love to have you come on board as a patron. So, Don, playing in cold weather. Yeah, I, I'm not a, a big fan of that by any stretch. Well, you know, the thing that's so funny to me is, you know, for uh, many of our listeners already know that I started off living and coaching in Wisconsin. And one of the things that I, noticed when I moved to the South is it took me a while to think about cold down here the same way that I did think about cold up there. I think the first <laughs> year, maybe 18 months, I don't think I ever even put uh, long pants on. I think I wore shorts every single day. Absolutely. And, and there'd be some days to be, you know, 45, you know, ish degrees outside and everybody else would be bundled up in their winter coats. Your and I'd have a long sleeve t-shirt and a pair of shorts on and I'd be going, you know, like it was, uh, you know, a beautiful day. And I think um, when you're used to the cold, the cold affects you differently than when you're not used to the cold. Just like I think you know, the opposite is true. If you're, if you're not used to the heat, when you get into really hot weather, I think that that's very, very challenging too. But I want us to talk about some guidelines, things that our coaches should be thinking about to help their team play better on cold days and you know, kind of, I guess, a, a toolbox or a plan of attack of things to have to try to alleviate the uh, unpleasantness of cold weather as much as we possibly can. No, I, as you're describing, you know, your experience coming south, I totally get it because it was the same way. We had a lot of Canadian kids that played at Kennesaw. It was funny to watch that all the kids from the south would still be bundled in their hoodies and the Canadian kids would be out in their short sleeves and shorts. Yeah weeks or even a month before everybody else. It's just different for everybody. Well, I remember uh, playing uh, when I brought my Parkside team down to Kennesaw when you had the Canadian kids, and we ended up playing early in the year, and there was one of those crazy spring trips where in the Atlanta area, we were um, out there playing against y'all, and it was flurrying. And for our kids, they didn't mind it at all. They were, you know, as happy as could be. I don't think, you know, half of them probably didn't even have long sleeves on under their jerseys. They didn't even realize Because, you know, to them, it was just another day. And I think you had some of your Canadian kids were the same. But the thing that I thought was part of the difference that day is I think some of the Southern kids <laughs> definitely knew it was cold out. Sure. And I think it might have made a little bit of a difference that day. But so a couple of things, coaches, we want you to start to think about. Cold is relative to where you live. If you're coaching a team in Florida and you get a 50 degree morning, that's going to feel like frozen tundra to your kids. Sure. If you're coaching a team in Michigan, and you get a 50-degree day, your kids are going to want to be out there in shorts and T-shirts. They're and so, jumping up and down, right? right. So, so depending upon where you're at, it's going to have a different Impact set of guidelines yeah. as to what, what cold really is. But the, the moral to the story is, is if a player is cold, it can and will impact their performance. Now, if it's really cold, it can physically affect them too. I mean, you know, hypothermia and things like that are legitimate concerns. Frostbite can be a legitimate softball concern depending upon where you're playing. So let's start thinking about how we can manage that better. So I think it starts off with what we're wearing. So the old school coach in me, the idea of somebody wearing a, a sweatshirt or a light jacket or something on a really cold day, when I first started, you would have been 
you know, I would have gone crazy if somebody would have gone out there with a sweatshirt on. Too but my, bound up. Yeah. And, yeah. But my, my attitude's changed a little bit. So one of the things that I would tell for all our coaches is have an option, something that your kids can wear. Layers. So, so, layers for sure, so that you can wear something under your jersey. And you can But feel. also, yeah. maybe it's a crew neck sweatshirt that has a number and a logo on it, so that that could be a cold weather jersey. Sure. You know, maybe it's a... Uh, three-quarter zip or a, a light jacket that's got a number and a logo on it. So that could be a cold weather part of your uniform so that even in the strictest of situations where they're requiring the players to all be wearing matching uniforms or you know to look exactly alike, we could have an option on those really cold days for the kids to have the right kind of clothing to stay warmer and to have a better chance to be comfortable while they're playing. How do you feel about hoodies, Tori? I know, so if they're in the dugout, they can put their hood back up yeah. and have a I, pouch I, for their hands. The, and... the hoodie part to me is a little bit more challenging just because I think that Too it's, overdone. It's, a, it's a lot of material to have on your body while you're playing, especially when you start putting your batting helmet and stuff like that on. So I like the crew idea. I like the light jacket idea. Yeah. And I like the many layers as you need under your jersey. Right. Uh, but you get to a point where it's kind of counterproductive. If you're up to three or four layers of Under Armour or, uh, or hot wear or cold wear or whatever it is under your jersey, you know, we start getting kind of bound up and, and feeling uncomfortable because we've got so much weight on us there too. So, But I think having those options, making sure that when you're putting your uniforms together, if you know you're going to play a whole bunch of you know, 45 degree games, you know, a whole bunch of cold, you know, drizzly, wintry kinds of games. Because of our area. Yeah. Having that option is a is a great way to go about it. You know, the old hand warmers is another one that I think is a really good idea. You go to Walmart or a Tractor Supply or any kind of sporting goods store, and they all sell those little chemical hand warmers that you you know you shake up and they warm up and you keep them in your pocket. I think that's another really good tool for coaches to plan for. And honestly, I think you if you're going to be playing any cold weather games at all, every coach should have already stopped at Walmart and bought fifteen or twenty of those and have them in his briefcase. So that when you have that really cold day, you can give every kid on your team a hand warmer and they can put it in their back pocket so that uh, they can keep their throwing hand warmer while they're waiting in between pitches. So they can just you know, keep you know, putting that hand in that pocket with the hand warmer, warm that throwing hand up a little bit. It's so important when to be they, able to feel your fingers, right? Right, so that you have an idea of what it is you're gripping and throwing when the ball actually gets hit to you. But I think that's another really good idea of something that's very inexpensive, you know, very easy to manage that I think is is a great investment. So I really like what you're saying about layering, Tori, because uh, there's nothing worse than feeling cold and having to go out and work through a ball game or work through a weekend or a tournament or whatever it might be. And it's easy to peel a layer off, but if you are not capable of staying warm, it's tough to be focused on, you know, the real important things, you know, like what's going on during the game. And, right. you know, to be able to peel one layer off might be perfect for one player, but two layers might need to come off for another. Right. And uh, to still look uniformed and, you know, I like the crew neck piece with a embroidered number or something at the top or maybe even a number on the back. So yeah. it could be used for a uniform as a great plan and idea. Yeah. And uh, the only thing I will throw out there about the hand warmers is make sure your kids take them out of the pocket of their pants before you put them in the laundry. <laughs> they don't go good in the laundry. No, they do not do well in the laundry. You'll end up with some crazy looking schmears of different uh, chemical kinds of colors on other things when you wash them or those white softball pants will have green fluorescent streaks on them from every time that hand they'll warmer be, rubs across the material as it goes through the dryer they'll, they'll be unique they'll yeah. definitely be unique they'll have that little bit of that tie-dye feeling so another one is the idea of uh you know we used to call them toboggans but like a winter hat it's a toque in canada tory yeah so whatever toque. whatever we call it a toboggan a winter hat a toque Toboggan, um, you sled down the hill. You, that's yeah, a what's a, yeah, but whatever you I know, call in the it. South. And again, something that's uniform, something that matches the team uniform. So again, if, I, if, you know, if I'm coaching in Michigan or Wisconsin. Have them logoed. Yeah, we're going to have a logoed toboggan or a logoed ski cap that every kid can wear on those really cold days. Stocking um, cap. Yeah, and again, I go. think it's a, a small investment, but it's a great way to, to still have the kids look like a team, but make sure that nobody's out there dying. If you don't provide them, You'll have one kid will have something from Christmas. It's got green and red and tassels on it. Another kid's going to show up with something, you know, with uh, some sort of crazy color college. scheme or yeah. favorite college or whatever it is. And so, but I think the winter hat idea is another good investment. So whether we're talking about what they're putting on their body or the hand warmers that they're going to carry around in their pocket, 
Another one that's a really good idea is some sort of a heater in the dugout or in the bench area. Sometimes um, there's restrictions on it. Sometimes there are, yeah. um, but I think that that's something that we're seeing more and more that uh, is being allowed. But something that goes with that, if you're coaching a travel team, and let's say the vast majority of places you play don't have a real enclosed dugout, but they've got sort of like the chain link fence bench area. I know where you're going on this. So a blue tarp with a couple of bungee cords can turn that fence into a real dugout and give you a, a nice the break wind. from the wind Yeah. Um, so that when you're in the dugout, and the same thing would be true on those really hot summer days when you need shade in that same dugout, because some of those don't have roofs or the roofs don't really line up with where they need to be to, to give you the shade. Tarp and um, bungee cords. Yeah, but the tarp and bungee cords, again, it's a, you know, a $25 investment. I mean, let's just be honest. If you're listening to Coach Prep, if I told you I can guarantee you're going to win one more game if you spend $25 on a set of bungee cords and a tarp. Give me four. Yeah, you're all doing it, right? I mean, everybody's doing it because you're listening to this. We know you want to win games. We know you want to you know, be a successful coach. So, Tori, so, with that thought, too, what about picking dugout when the wind? I, I remember times having to pick a particular go- dugout, and you know if you're having to enclose it yourself. Yeah, that might be part of the deal too. Yeah, because if the wind is blowing in your face, you can't put the tarp over the front of the dugout <laughs> right. and not watch the game. Right. So, you know, so if you have some options on that regard, but you could put it over half of the dugout and give you a little bit of a wind break. You know, to the first pipe across the dugout, so that you got a little bit of a relief. Right. So, a couple other things about cold weather, though. We know high end bats don't like cold weather. Okay. This is true. And high-end bats don't like balls that are frozen solid because of cold weather. So this both of those true. are a problem. Now, you have no control, or usually you have no control over the balls because the umpire usually has those in his pocket when he's uh, walking out to the game. But if you're providing balls and you're staying in a hotel, let's say you went someplace to play and it's going to be freezing cold overnight. Leave them in the trunk? Oh, of course, you leave all your stuff in the trunk so it can be <laughs> totally frozen solid. But no, what you Bring should your be bags doing in. Yeah, is you should be bringing your bat bag, your equipment, and the balls, if you're providing game balls, all that stuff should come in the hotel with you so that it's all at room temperature. Now, yes, it will get cold eventually when it's outside all day long, but if my choice is it's room temperature when I get there, so it's slowly getting colder as the day goes on. You figure out how to keep on. them warm. And then I get back in the car after that game, and I put my bat back in the warm car with me so it warms up again. Then it slowly gets colder over the next game. It's a whole lot better than it's a frozen you know, popsicle when I get in the car in the morning because it's been in the trunk of the car or the back of the truck overnight on that freezing cold night. Yeah, that's a, that's a for sure no-no. That goes the same at home, right? Yep. When we're at home and we've got it out in the garage maybe or outside parked out front. Don't leave your bags out in the out in the trunk or yeah. in the back of the SUV. And now we did mention the idea of a heater in the dugout. The one thing I will tell you is don't use the heater to heat your bats. We've got that story. Somebody I know who shall remain innocent in this discussion had all their team bats sitting in the dugout. They put the uh, torpedo heater, the the dugout like heater, right up to them to try to warm up their bats and melted all the end caps out of the bats, so the bats ended up all being junk. And I don't know how you explain to Easton or Louisville or De Marini that the reason you're well, sending this bat back is that the end cap melted out. I don't know how a, you... A half a dozen of them show up on Monday. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how you try to say that that was some sort of a manufacturing defect. So right. And so that temptation is always there. I know that people have tried to use different kinds of bat heaters and things like that. And there are some limitations or some places where they're illegal to use. So we just want to make sure that we're not doing anything. Tori, something that we used to do was, you know, everybody would be wearing a coat or a jacket and we would take and if you can imagine taking the barrel and sleeving it down, down your arm, kind of by your armpit and then closing it up. That would keep the bats warm in between innings when we were out on defense. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. But so anything that we can do to keep the equipment warm and, and keep it game ready as possible is a good idea. You know, I see all the time that people talk about, well, I've got one bat that I use when the weather is good and one bat that I use when the weather is bad. Unfortunately, the bat that you're choosing to use on bad weather days is probably not as high performing oriented. of yeah. a bat as the one you want to use on warm weather days. And again, coaches, I know you're listening to this. You're not going to tell me that if you're playing in the <laughs> championship game and if you win this championship game, you win the tournament or you win your league or you win you know, the right to go to the national championship or whatever is on the, the line. You're good one out, Tori. You're, you're not using the crappy bat that's weatherproof. You're using the hot bat that's going to help you win the games. And if it breaks, it breaks. That's just the way it goes. Keep and it so, warm. Keep right, it so warm. do everything keep you can to keep crossed. it warm as long as you possibly can. 
and do everything you can to protect it as much as you can. But we all know human nature is I want to win more than I'm going to worry about whether I break this bat or not. Hit that ball, Tori. Yeah. Yeah. So, but cold weather, we know for sure is a challenge. We're giving you a couple things to think about. I'm sure there's many others, drinking hot chocolate and hot coffee and things like that to keep you warm. I'm sure there's a million others. Being a fan of the Packers, I can tell you there's lots of things that we used to drink to stay warm when we went to Packer games, but then eventually I figured out that that wasn't good for my <laughs> long-term right health. Plan. What so. about blankets? Stuff like that for your pitcher in between innings. I think anything that you anything? can do in the dugout to help your players stay as warm as possible is always a good idea. And again, my opinion has changed a lot because, like I said, I used to be that hardcore guy that, you know, just suck it up, buttercup. You right. should be able to grind through it no matter what. And now I understand how stupid that was. We're, so. we're, we're just tougher than the other ones. Yeah. So, yeah. so coaches, start putting together your toolkit. Make sure you've got all the right stuff to give your kids every advantage you can give them on those cold weather days and everybody's going to be a whole lot happier. So that's going to wrap up number 112. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If uh, you can, please check out our sponsors, Anderson Bad Company. Take advantage of that EFP20 discount. Go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch and become a patron. So for Coach Don McKinley and our producer, Stan Lewis, this is Coach Tory. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next week. <laughs>